Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Battlefords, Lloyd Minster. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise uh, to speak to Bill C-6, uh, an act to amend the criminal code in relation to conversion therapy. It is my belief, Mr. Speaker, that harmful conversion therapy practices are wrong and have no place in Canadian society. No person should be forced or coerced to change their sexual orientation or their gender identity. And as we consider this legislation, it is incumbent upon us to examine the actual text of Bill C-6. We must review what is in it, or in this case, what is not in the legislation itself. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, laws will be interpreted and applied based on their written text and not on an expressed intent. It is for that reasons, reason that I have serious reservations with this bill. This legislation lacks a clear definition of conversion therapy. Its definition is so general that it leaves room to be applied broadly. There is very reasonable concern that this legislation could criminalize voluntary conversations and efforts to seek support. It also leaves the door open to infringe on religious expression and parental rights. As we know, this bill has been reintroduced after it was cleared from the legislative table when the Liberal government unnecessarily prorogued Parliament. It was originally introduced in the first session of this Parliament as Bill C-8. Concerns about the broad definition were raised with the original introduction of this bill. With the clearing of the legislative slate, the Liberal Justice Minister had the opportunity to fix the definition. It is disheartening that this legislation was reintroduced without addressing these serious concerns. The Justice Minister was fully aware of the, these concerns and made the decision to ignore them. In fact, after the first introduction of this legislation, the Department of Justice put the following disclaimer on their website, and it reads, these new offenses would not criminalize private conversations in which personal views on sexual orientation, sexual feelings, or gender identity are expressed, such as where teachers, school counselors, pastoral counselors, faith leaders, doctors, mental health professionals, friends, or family members provide affirming support to persons struggling with their sexual orientation, sexual feelings, or gender identity. That statement, Mr. Speaker, would not have been offered if there was no need for it. By providing that clarification, there is an implied acknowledgement that the legislation is not clear. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, a disclaimer on the department's website is not the same as legislating it. That statement takes a position that is not explicitly stated in this bill before us. There is nothing in Bill C-6 that clearly states that private conversations in which a person expresses their views on sexual orientation, sexual feelings, or gender identity won't be criminalized. When a person is struggling or wrestling with life's issues, regardless of what that might be, it's very common to voluntarily turn to a trusted person for support. In fact, we would probably all encourage a person to reach out for help and not go through and struggle alone. For each, for each person, Mr. Speaker, a trusted person is different. It could be a counsellor, it could be a faith leader, a parent, a teacher, a friend, or any person that they may feel comfortable with. To have the space for open, honest, and real conversation, there cannot be a cloud of legal uncertainty around that conversation. There should not be fear of repercussions for expressing a certain viewpoint, offering counsel, or even just having an informal conversation. That does not serve the individual seeking support or the individual offering it. There must be a freedom to openly talk to those that we trust. We must be cautious not to undermine support networks. In introducing this legislation, the Liberal government has spoken about protecting LGBTQ rights, and it is so important, Mr. Speaker, that their rights are protected. And I would agree that we should stand up to protect those who have been degraded or dehumanized by harmful conversion therapy practices. That's why, as legislators, 
we should be committed to getting this bill right. And in that effort, we also have the responsibility to be mindful of the rights of all Canadians. Without a clear definition, it leaves room for, leaves room for the infringement of other held rights. Parental right, rights in the guidance of children must be part of this debate, just as freedom of religion and freedom of belief are also a part of this debate. Parents have not only the right, but the responsibility of raising their children. That responsibility includes providing food, shelter, and clothing for them. But, Mr. Speaker, parenting goes well beyond providing material needs for a child. Parental guidance is key to a child's development. Moms, dads, and guardians help protect the physical and psychological well-being of a child. They also help a child understand and unpack the world around them. And we often hear parents of infants and toddlers talk about reliving the world through their child's eyes. A child learns about the world around them, and a parent is there to help guide and navigate them. As a mom myself, I know firsthand, firsthand that kids from a very young age will ask their parents an abundance of questions, and sometimes they never stop. It does not matter, Mr. Speaker, if it's the most basic of questions or something incredibly thought-provoking. Parents are there to offer response and insight. It is healthy for parents and their children to have open and honest dialogue, and for parents to help children in their understanding of their own emotions. A loving and open relationship between parents and children helps foster self-worth and self-esteem. It is important for children to feel comfortable in coming to their parents when they have questions, struggles, or want to talk through or about their feelings. In a world where we live more and more of our lives online, where kids are exposed to so many outside influences, where kids can be inundated with over-sexualized content from a very young age and have access to so much information, whether it's credible or not. We need to have more real conversations between children and their parents, and not less. The other concern with the broad definition of conversion therapy in this legislation is its relationship to religious expression. A code of conduct around ethics, morality, and sexuality is common amongst major religions. These are often strongly held beliefs that are studied, instructed, and practiced by all persons of faith. Faith groups have expressed their worry about how this legislation will be applied to them. Will they remain free to teach and encourage members of their faith community to practice their faith in accordance to their religious teachings? Or will this legislation in its application go well beyond criminalizing involuntary, harmful, and discriminatory conversion therapy practices? Mr. Speaker, as I have said, it is my belief that the practice of involuntary conversion therapy is harmful and should be banned. But we cannot ban or police thought and expression. We cannot infringe on the religious freedoms, and we must respect parents. In an effort to ban the practice of conversion therapy, we cannot needlessly criminalize normal and healthy conversations. As it, as it is written in the current legislation, the definition of conversion therapy is overreaching in my view, and it is flawed. It does not strike the right balance between protecting people of the LGBTQ community, parental rights, and freedom of religion. By providing a clearer definition of conversion therapy, we can provide needed clarity on the scope and the intent of this legislation. Mr. Speaker, that is why I personally will be supporting this bill at the second reading stage, so that it can go to committee where amendments can be put forward in good faith, in good faith, to improve and to fix the current legislation's shortfalls. It is my sincere hope that the Liberal government will be open to amendments so that we can get this right for all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. You.